What is the difference between wobblers, EPM, and lime? Oh boy, our shortest question might be one of our most answer. robust. No, because um, I, I understand where she's coming from. Unfortunately, she's probably got a horse with some sort of gait asymmetry mm. or neurologic. Yes, and, and it's like, kinda. is it neurologic or is it lame? Mm. That's a big question. There are actually talks at vet conferences that are full, and all, they're only titled. Is he neurologic or is he lame? And we're all like, we don't know. <laughs> so that's where you start. And there, after you do a complete physical exam. Is there exam, a game show? Do you guys do game Jeopardy? shows? Jeopardy? Yeah. I can't, I can't. Is he neurologic that. or is he lame? Like, yeah. I feel like there's like a real. Buzzers yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't disclose that. But so you, you do your, your physical exam and then you might do a neurological exam. And I I think Dr. Canips was here and he sure did was. a neurological exam, so that'd be a great video to watch because there's some specific tests that can indicate to the veterinarian is the the brain working properly, and is the spinal cord and then all the little segments coming off it working? Are they is the information flowing back and forth unimpeded? Mm -hmm. And so once you have it narrowed down to the nervous system is fine, now it's a lameness, or in the case of Lyme disease it's an infection. Mm -hmm. So we should probably start after that. Some of these are infections and some aren't. So um, the first one I think she mentioned was wobblers and you might be called that, it might be called uh, equine wobbler syndrome, but it's the, the veterinary name is cervical vertebral malformation or CVM. Oh, we all don't say that. <laughs> and what it means is that the some vertebrae in the neck are malformed and it can happen at, with birth, or it can be, it can be um, genetic, or it can happen with an accident or injury. And because the vertebrae are not formed right, and they, they compress on mm. the spinal cord as it mm -hmm. goes through, so then the communication is impeded. And so wobbler horses, their name, they stagger, they look like they're drunk. Mm. Well, the word we might use is, the vets might use is ataxic. So if you hear your vet talking about ataxia, that means wobbling and staggering and acting drunk and not having sea legs, whatever. So that's something that sometimes can be fixed with management, nutrition, um, and, and some medication. Usually it has to go to surgery. Mm -hmm and they put in a, a basket, they called, and stabilize the vertebrae that are not shaped right and that are pinching that. So that's wobblers. Um, but helpful that it has a treatment option? It can have a treatment, yeah. The problem is the prognosis isn't super great mm. for full restoration to 100% of what the horse was before mm -hmm. it began to show signs. So that's, you know, when you hear about a horse being wobblers, you're like, oh, that's yeah. because we can save the horse, but it probably can't save the career, mm -hmm. um, and then it wouldn't be safe. So that, so that's that one. And then um, EPM. So EPM stands for equine protozoal myeloencephalitis. So equine's horse. Protozoal is the organism that does the infection, and then myeloencephalitis. So the itis means inflammation. Yep. And the myeloencephalo is where the heck is the inflammation in the brain and spinal cord. Um, EPM has been around since the 90s. It's only an American thing, so you tend not to see it in Europe or European horses. Um, it can be treated. There's three medications now. There's Marquis, there's Rebalance, and uh, uh, Ponazaril, Protozil is the third one that are all FDA-approved medications for it. It's tricky because depending on where the organism lands in the spinal cord from the brain to the tail, you can have all different signs. Mm. And so that's why a horse with EPM Could might be like acutely wobblers. down, yeah. might look like um, like a West Nile virus, mm -hmm. it might look like a wobblers, it might look like a lameness. I mean, you just, until you know that this is neurologic or lameness and then where the lesion is, it's tough. Um, the EPM horses also, when you first begin to treat them, can get worse right away mm. rather than better, and that's a little scary. So um, I would say if your horse is displaying any signs of gait asymmetry is a really good word, or in coordination, mm -hmm. um, that's because the sooner with these neurological problems you contact your vet, 
the better it is because the when there's neurological damage, it does tend to be permanent. Uh, nerve tissue is not that great at regenerating and restoring and rebuilding like some other tissue in the body. And then, of course, Lyme disease, also an infection. That one's tricky. These are all tricky diseases because Lyme can look, there's a neurological mm -hmm. component. There's a, a lameness component. Like one of the main uh, signs we think of with Lyme is the shifting lameness. Mm -hmm. Like they have hot, swollen joints. I swear it was the left front, and then you come out the next day and it's the right front, and so it moves around. And if people can get it too, so mm -hmm. it's just, it's really uncomfortable. But they can have signs, they can have eye inflammation and all sorts of things. And um, that's a, a bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, spread by the deer tick. And um, I found out today that not everyone knows what the name is from, Lyme, Connecticut. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So because it's, so the, the um, not every place in the country, like if you look at a map, it's, there's a lot of it in New England. There's a lot of Lyme disease in uh, the upper Midwest and then like the state of Washington. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's, it's states that are near Canada. Hmm. Is what it, is what it looks like, yeah, so. Yeah, a lot of tick-borne diseases in other areas. Yeah. Different ticks, different diseases. This is but the yeah. number one tick-borne disease, yeah, of people and animals, yeah. so. But I, I hope her horse doesn't have these, um, but it can be tricky to figure out. None of them have good tests really to figure out quickly and 100% with, with 100% confidence what they are. It takes, yeah. it can take a while to figure out any of these three. Yeah, I think she asked what the difference was, but in terms of what the similarities are, incredibly frustrating, scary if you're the horse owner. Mm -hmm. So we hope that that's not happening to your horse. Right.